Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. Next match, Cross Balanced Cup. It has been a while, right? But again, after like a, you know, big week, a uh, lot of reveals, new support, let's uh, dig in, right? The next matchup, we are still at Group D, so almost, um, you know, the first wave of the, um, you know, the, the first part, I guess, here of the group stage. We have uh, Fish OTK featuring Frox, Synchro, Light and Darkness Dragon, Deep Sea King, you know, Tribute Summon, this guy. Special summon those fishes from your deck, like Fish Body Blaster and you know, Synchro Summon Away. A deck list from 2011, by the way. It's going to take on a deck list or a deck, an archetype, pretty much one year later from that particular list from 2012. You have Wind Up, so pretty much one of the first Wind Up deck lists. And um, again, I, I feel the deck speaks for itself. 42 cards in the main deck, there is a super crap lineup with Torrential Tribute, Solemn Warning, Solemn the One of Solemn Judgment. But mainly the wind up hand loop, right? So again, wind up hunter being legal at least for now. I'm going second. That's a problem because as you saw, Fish OTK is kind of similar to Formula Frog Monarchs or Frog Monarchs in general. Because, well, of course, there's the, the Swap Frog, uh, Dupe Frog if it's main decked, uh, the Double Tree Born Frog. So it's quite of a slow deck. And there is, of course, Fish Bark Blaster uh, or any other water uh, types to be discarded for the special summon of Swap Frog to maybe get some speed going into the deck. But okay, long story short. The giant tornade definitely helps out. If it wasn't for tornade, I definitely already would have lost this one. But again, tornade. Again, that's why it's there. There was no heavy storm because it was banned at that time. Going for Brionek again, pre Arata Brionek to bounce away those cards. This card, you know, bounce up to two because I discarded two, and I can eventually go for a game. This should be like a little over 8k because of the level 5 synchro. I'm not going to butcher its name, but it gets like an extra attack boost if there is like a, or I believe a low level water monster is sent to the graveyard, I believe. Well, as long, again, long story. Is short if you go for let's say like a use your fish bark blaster for a synchro summon for formula for example it, it will get the uh, yeah pretty much the necessary attack boost to give you uh, a little over 8k to potentially push for a game especially because of brionic right this is a problem though, again going second against a deck like windups is, is terrible, especially if you're uh, like a deck that doesn't really have access to too many hand traps. I believe DD Crow is pretty much the only hand trap and it's crucial to, you know, like, uh, like shut down a potential wind-up red, I believe the name is. But uh, but even then, Mon D Crow is far from enough. So wind-up red hits the board again. That, 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 that's the thing, right? Wind-up hand loop, um, pre-ban list, full force, I guess, wind-ups. And you know, that you, what you're seeing here is how powerful Tory Guide was back then. Like, one of those early cards in the Exceed era that, like, if, if you had Tory Guide or had access to Tory Guide, uh, as in, in your deck, you had like like a mile or you, you were miles ahead uh, over your opponent's deck because it was so powerful and if you remember from back then in a the TCG is that and I remember it very well is that uh, early Exceed era um, I believe that was post windups though uh, at least post this deck list is that if you remember correctly is that um, if, if let's say Sangen was detached as an Exceed material for like Livier or Zen mains back then early Exceed era it was ruled in a TCG that Sangen would search even though it was you know detached from like you know from, from an Exceed material but that's obviously not the case and it was quickly corrected after some time though but uh, I believe that was like very early 2011 I remember it playing it back then with like agents so agent story guides detach Sangen and search but yeah, anyway, uh, got hand looped. That's how it is. Um, double Zen Mighty. That's cool. And what is it? Is it Giga Brilliant? You know, detach and all of your monsters will gain like uh, 300 attack. I believe it's only attack. Not sure if it's defense as well. But um, yeah, I mean, what can I do? Uh, if if you leave the the the, the wind up deck with like one or two Zen Mighty, I believe the name is of the XC. Yeah, it should be. Then uh, the, the the deck can grind or gain more advantage next turn. Like. Uh, 
uh, the combination of wind up rabbit, banish wind up rat, or banish wind up magician, so it can return next turn to use its effect again. Yada yada, you know, that that's that's the problem. And uh, oh, okay, yeah, dimensional fisher is something I <laughs> overlooked, but obviously it was in the side deck as well and does prevent stuff like DD Crow from activating, and that's crucial here in this um, you know part of the game. So game number four, I go uh, no, I go first, and here I was like, well, okay, I only have one mystical space typhoon, and if again lineups has the capability to or has opened the dimensional fissure again, then it's probably going to be game either way. So I need to save the mystical space typhoon, or obviously use it if my opponent is able to force it out. Let's say with Tiras, for example, right? But uh, again, long story short, there is the dimensional fissure, so I have to use it now preemptively because again. If I'm not mistaken, the ruling states that DD Crow needs to be sent to the graveyard. So I waited on the first wind up hunter. Again, it will be sent to the graveyard eventually because, again, exceed materials will just be sent to the graveyard with a dimensional fissure on the field. And I needed the DD Crow to save my bottom here. Cyber Dragon coming in clutch. So getting rid of all the machine types on my opponent's side of the field. Get myself back in the duel and the Koala Count, you know, uh, if it's pronounced that way. Deep Sea King is not going to help here. Um, it's kind of unaffected by uh, cards that target it, or is it monster effects, not sure about that. But you need to tribute, I believe, a fish type on the field. So again, correct me if I'm wrong, it's something like that. So, okay, it does have some built-in protection against like uh, like effect failure, but it's not um, the best way, because again, you need another monster on the field. And that could potentially be something that, you know, that, that's a zone that cannot be used for monsters to be special summoned from the deck. Um, so double deep, sing, uh, deep sea king in hand, but that's cool, I, I have three born frog, I have Ronin and Toad in, in here, so this should be my duel, and again, windups is really low on life, once the gores is there, kinda, you know, stuck in the hand because of the windup spell card. So again, Oyster Meister, basically a level 3 regular monster that when it's sent to the graveyard, other than being destroyed by battle, it will give you a, a, like a, like a, um, a token, right? Level 1, basically formula synchron father. So again, level 5 synchro play, level 6 synchro play eventually, or, and that's where this deck also shined, is that with the old uh, Colossal Fighter, well, arm rearm ruling, um, the deck ha definitely has the capability to uh, arm rearm slash Colossal Fighter OTK your opponent. Um, you, know, you know, like let's say equip army arm to one of your opponent's bigger attack monsters and then keep suicide crashing your uh, colossal fighter into it and then your opponent will gain or you know like get the burn damage. But that was uh, you know like pre errata Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're going into game number five, that's how it is, and I see my opening hand, I was like, okay, there is Cyber Dragon, Dude, that could potentially steal away or get rid of all the machine types in windups, that's, you know, that that's big, uh, Dark Hole as well, it's it's keep getting missed by the windup hunter and the unnecessary dupe frog, but if windups is not able to open with Pot of Everest, it, can, it cannot loop for the full hand, uh, Steel Swarm Roach, that's a cool one, but Treeborn Frog is there, you know, Steel Swarm Roach could potentially negate a special summon of Cyber Dragon, but again, Treeborn is there to potentially tribute for Cyber Dragon. So, but it was discarded, so I can go for Dark Hole. But the Zen Mains, Zen Mains is a strong one. Again, it keeps itself on board, detaching plus the potential pop during the end phase, plus the search of Windup Factory just gives the Windup deck so much advantage. And again, Red hits the board, Magician again hits the board, and again triggers once per turn for you know the the, the, the same copy. Uh, well, no, once it's phased up on the field, right? That's how Windups work. But um, yeah, Leviere is cool, another wind-up red effect for the level 4 Utopia, basically all non-machine types, I, well, Zen Mains is there as a machine type, but that's basically it, right? Red could potentially, uh, red, yeah, wind-up red is potentially something for, you know, like an Exceed summon later, but I think my only option here is for Cyber Dragon, and then maybe, you know, uh, Cyber Dragon, for Light and Darkness Dragon to maybe get myself back in the duel, but you know how it was back then, Light and Darkness Dragon was a game winner, but if you're opponent and knew how to play around it, like like here in this case, use any form of effect, your, this Titan Darkness Dragon is forced, uh, you know, you don't have the option, Light and Darkness Dragon is forced to activate the effect, its effect, lowering its attack set and defense set with 500 if I'm not mistaken, and then your opponent can just chain the direct counter to it, like Bottomless Trapple, like Book of Moon, like Dimensional Prison, and again, Light and Darkness Dragon is not able to negate the same, or at least, you know, like, like a, a card, uh, in the same chain, right? 
So yeah, what can I do? Nothing really, but the hand loop definitely destroyed my uh, my hand here in game number 5. But that's how it is. So windups move, well, move on. They get the 3 points, but Fish ODK did well, especially because, uh, you know, it was like, like a 70-30-ish uh, um, votes here in the uh, early video, right? So next matchup, we have a good one. Spellbooks from 2013 against the winner from last year. So that's performance and pals. Same deck list. Okay, guys. So Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment or like if you enjoyed the video. Leakum signing out. Peace.